How's it going everybody, Ben from Base at Mewhill and welcome back to the channel. In this video I'm trying to find out if Paldea Evolved can be weighed. So what I will do while I weigh all of these packs, I will probably speed all of this up and then just have a voiceover of me talking about the reasoning and everything. So let's just do that while I weigh all of these packs. Alright, over to the voiceover then. I think before I get more into it, there are a few questions that I need to answer first. The first question is to, why am I doing this? There are multiple answers to that question. First and foremost is of course I want to prove if Paldea Evolved is actually weighable. Now I do realize there are some people out there asking if I do prove that Paldea Evolved is weighable and I show this in a video how to do it, doesn't that make it easier for scammers to potentially harm other people? That's not necessarily true. The main reason is to also spread awareness, because if Paldea Evolved ends up being weighable, I think you should avoid buying loose packs from sellers you don't trust. Which is an advice that goes far beyond just Paldea Evolved. Because other than weighing packs, especially older sets that I will get into later on in the video, they can also be tampered with if you really don't know the seller. The other answer to that question is simply, I like Paldea Evolved and I still need a bunch of cards from the set. And I thought long about how I could open a Paldea Evolved booster box without it being too stale. So I kind of figured out this new format might work. I will also mention this one later on in the video, but Paldea Evolved is actually the last Scarlet and Violet era set that had really good pull rates. Because the chance to pull any special illustration rare in Paldea Evolved is a 1 in 32 chance. If we compare that to the latest Pokemon TCG set, Stellar Crown, the chance to pull a special illustration rare in that set is 1 in 90. A stark contrast from Paldea Evolved. Although the Pokemon company seems to be moving towards more difficult pull rates, if they are going to be as bad as during the Sword and Shield era, we don't know yet. I really do hope they pull back, but I do have a slight feeling they won't. The other question I wanted to answer is what do I hope to gain from this video? I think the most simple answer to that question is insight. While the general consensus is that a heavy pack always contains a holographic, which is definitely true for these older sets like Base Set, Skyridge, Aquapolis, that doesn't necessarily hold true for all sets. I think the sets from the third generation do come to mind. Sets that featured Gold Star cards were notorious for actually containing Gold Stars that were way lighter than the rest of the packs. Similar to the Shining cards. During the Sword and Shield era, the Pokemon company actually tried to counteract that by introducing white or black coat cards. They have done away with the black or white coat cards for the Scarlet and Violet era, so I do want to prove if they might have figured out a way to make packs unweighable. So I guess that sums up why I'm doing this video. And just a little bit of a spoiler right here, I did end up pulling two special illustration rails. Alright, and here we are. So this is the weights we ended up with. One thing I've noticed that my handwriting is absolutely atrocious. The other thing I've noticed is I should have written the number of the pack right off the start instead of doing it like towards the end. That way it's way easier to identify and also have the Excel sheet be way easier to fill out. Uh, most notably, this appears to be the lightest pack and at 22.40 grams and this is by far the heaviest pack at 22.65. I mean there is a high chance that for some of these there are just some margin of errors. I think with this one the 2.55 I'm pretty sure this should go in this pile as well since it's literally just 0.01 gram difference. Same with this one I suppose this should probably go into the um, 0.59 um, but here we are. We're gonna start with the lightest and go on with the heaviest. So let's start with this one with the 22.40 which is pack number 8 and this is important for the Excel sheet. So in this video this is the first pack I'm opening but in the grand scheme of things this is the 8th pack in the Excel sheet. Oh by the way I'm pretty sure I've said it in my in my voiceover but I'm making this Excel sheet available in on my Discord server. So I'll have a link down below to join the Discord server and then you can check out that Excel sheet. 
but let's see. I'm not expecting anything actually for these light packs, but then again, I might be wrong. I was wrong. So the lightest pack actually ended up pulling a full art trainer and a dendra at that which is horribly off-centered, but we'll let that one slide. This Dendra card also looks a bit weird. Maybe it's because I haven't pulled an English Full Art Trainer in a long time, but I just feel like there is a layer missing of that card. Like, I can definitely see the texture a little bit, but it looks kind of odd to me. And maybe they look worse than I remember. Um, I think I have this card though, so I'll be sure to check that out later on. But here we are. The lightest pack actually ended up having a full art trainer. Did not expect that at all, to be fair. Did not expect that one. All right, that's one pack down. Let's move on to these next ones. I'm pretty sure the packs that have the most, like these, these ones right here, pretty sure that's just bulk, but it's an experiment and it's actually pretty fun so far. I'm actually really liking this. I like filling out those, those papers, filling out those Excel sheets. And I thought this is really, really fun, at least for me. I hope it is fun to watch as well. I mean, it is an opening. It's just an opening with extra steps. But you know, every once in a while, you do have to take some extra steps for an opening. And here we are, just a holographic, as I suspected. And here is the code card for that one. At least you guys still get the code card. So even if I don't pull anything, you guys still have the code card. All right, next up to the 48. I mean... If, if everything holds true, if the first one didn't have a pull, then this one also shouldn't have a pull, right? Um, we'll see if that holds true. This is the whole point of this video, is to prove if um, Paldea Evolved is able to be weighed, is if it's weighable. And then also, I'm pretty sure I've mentioned it in my voiceover as well. Well, nope. That throws it off completely again. A mouse hold illustration rare. Okay. It was the exact same weight as the other card. Let me just put this one aside. Here is the code card for that one. There you go. And here is the mouse hold up close. Okay. Exact same weight. First one didn't have a, a pull, but this one did. Um, I guess to truly find out if it is weighable, I will have to look at my Excel sheet and see if there is like a... Um, a watchman thing, a connection between these weights. Because, as I'm pretty sure I've mentioned throughout the voiceover as well, weighing packs is very, very common for these older ones. Like, base set is very notorious for people weighing the packs, of course. Yo, Iono! Okay. Well then, this just throws off the ratios completely, but here we are, the Iono. Not the Iono I would have hoped for, but the Iono nonetheless also seems to be damaged for some reason. Um, let me just do this, show you the code card. Put these cards over here, and I don't know if the camera will focus on it. You see that up above? That looks like factory damage. Also the... Yeah, look at this down here as well. What is that? The card came out damaged out of the pack. That is very, very weird. This card looks better than the Dendra, but also a little bit weird. Well, anyways, we pulled the Gremlin, so that's nice. Moving it on to the only 49 gram pack, or 22.49. Pretty sure this should have gone in the 0.48 pile as well. Maybe there are some things that I didn't notice at the time. Or maybe some indifferences, but that's, that's fine. That's fine. We'll all figure this one out. I also have to figure out which packs, I mean, I think up until 22.49, I would call it a light one. And then, yeah, here, that's just a holographic. And up until these ones, they are just medium. And then starting from maybe 58, since 58 doesn't seem to have that many, we'll, we'll consider them heavy, quote unquote. And to finish my original thought, the... The heavy packs or base set is very notorious for being weight, not just base set, basically just like any vintage and really, really expensive pack, like Aqua Polis, so on, Sky Rich, you name them. Even the Gen 3 packs, although with the Gen 3 packs it's kind of odd, more on that a bit later on. But yeah, base set is very notorious for being weight and 
I kind of want to say rightfully so, because if you actually do buy a booster box, which is really, really expensive, don't know how much a booster box of base set is nowadays, not just, not talking about first edition, pretty sure first edition is like really expensive. But even just an unlimited base set booster box has to be like really expensive. So if you actually do buy one with the intent of opening it, what almost everyone does is they weigh the packs and they either just open the heavy ones or they will sell the heavy ones, which is for, for some listings, if you just look around for base set booster packs, sometimes people will actually state that the that the base or that the booster pack is heavy and you know if a booster bo or booster pack is heavy stumbling across all of my words right here if a booster box or booster pack is heavy it is more than likely to contain a holographic which obviously in base set the holographic that you do want to pull is of course the red lizard the charizard or any of the other two um, blastoise venusaur and so on slacking just a holographic so so far with these medium packs that we have the most of seems to be holding true that these are most likely just gonna have our bulk and yeah so heavy base set packs or just any heavy pack from like the wizards of the coast era um will fetch a premium especially first edition like first edition heavy base set packs actually are really really expensive because if you do have a heavy pack of face at first edition and uh, there is a more than likely chance that that pack contains a charizard as the holographic of course it could also just contain like a what other is there is there chancy in base set i wouldn't know i actually have never opened base set i started with gen 3 with like ruby and sapphire yeah shame on me shame on me but you know it is what it is Last of the 22.50, and so far, no pull out of those weight ranges. Let's see if this one holds true as well. For for these lighter ones, I was kind of surprised. I mean, we've pulled the Yono, the Dendra, and the Mousehold. So definitely weren't expecting those to have any pulls in, to be fair. But so far, it seems like this is... This holds true with this one right there. All right, moving it on to the 22.51. Like throughout all of these, I'm actually expecting zero pulls, but we'll have to open them anyways for science. For science, and because it's kind of fun. I've been wanting to open Paldean Fates, like because I still need a few, few cards, most notably the Iono. But also, I think the Grusha is also in here. That's also one that I kind of want for my full art trainer collection. And. Paldea Evolved is, I don't want to say it's the last set where the pull rates are actually really, really good. Because ever since after Paldea Evolved, for the Scarlet Invited era specifically, they reduced the pull rates. Like if you just check, there are multiple posts out there. I think Limitless TCG or Limitless also um, always, um, whatchamacallit, release their pull rate information when a new set releases. And just compare that one to like Twilight Masquerade or Paradox Rift, and you see the pull rates have gone down substantially after Paldea evolved. So this is like kind of the the last Scarlet and Violet set that had really, really good pull rates. But there we are, so just a holographic. As I thought, as I thought so far, my theory with these ones being our main bulk seems to be holding true. And then once again, I can't say it enough, nothing is promised in English booster boxes. I mean, I was proven firsthand last time around when I said we should only expect about three illustration wares, and then I ended up pulling a fourth one, which ended up also being the, um, the Squirtle. So I was really happy about that one. And, well, maybe, but, you know, generally, let's just say it like that, generally, you can expect about three illustration rares. I mean, that's from my personal experience, other than that last booster box I opened. I was really surprised that Stellar Crown one, though. Never had- I've never had that happen before. Every single booster box that I opened of the Scarlet and Violet sets, I've always had three illustration rares. But then again, I don't open that many booster boxes anyways, as I've alluded to in earlier videos. I usually just open a booster box at release of the set and then I might open a few more products here and there 
like some random products and then stuff for the for the shorts videos as well. But here we are. Last one of the 22.51 weight. And if our theory keeps holding true, and this should also just be a holographic. Oops. Almost skipped the Great Bull there. Raichu, very cute. Gothitelle, Octobax. We've got a Super Rod. Yes, right. Um, Mimikyu and the energy with the card, with the code card right there. Okay. So, so far that theory of these ones containing our bulk has been holding true. And 22 or 22.52 is up next. Not expecting any changes for these ones, really. I'm still expecting these to have mostly our holographics. It's going to be really interesting to find out what that really, really heavy pack contains. That 22.65 pack. That will be really interesting. Yep, and just a Wigglytuff. Pretty happy looking Wigglytuff. And also kind of interesting. I'm currently playing through um, Pokemon Mystery Dungeon Explorers of Sky. Since I haven't done that before, I've only played through Explorers of Time. I didn't even know that Explorers of Sky was basically just like Explorers of Time with a few QOL changes and stuff and, and so on and a bit of extra content here and there and a few extra Pokemon, which I actually ended up getting. I got Riolo and chose Skitty as my partner, skipping all the cards in here, but it should be fine. Welp. Skipped a Gothitelle there, sorry about that one, and Boss's Orders. Nothing, nothing too fancy in this one. So I'm currently playing through um, Explorers of Sky. Really makes me wonder, though, if we're gonna get another Pokemon Mystery Dungeon game in a few in a few months, years. I don't know. It has been kind of long, right? Like since a new one. I know they actually remade the very first one, like um, Explorers Rescue Team Blue and Red, which the blue one was on Nintendo DS, and then the red one was on Game Boy Advance. I still remember that. I actually got the the blue one, I did have a Nintendo DS at the time, and I played that game like you wouldn't believe. I might have actually played that game more than any other game, well, other than the the Gen 3 games. Because it actually got to the point where I had every single Pokemon in every single habitat. I still remember doing, like, certain dungeons. It might have been Jirachi or the... either the Mew or the Oxus dungeon, one of those. And I had to do those multiple times because the legendary Pokemon, well, I think, if I remember correctly, um, you have to clear the dungeon first, and then on your first clear, there is zero chance that the legendary Pokemon will join your team. And then you, you basically, you have to clear it a second time, and then you have to get lucky that you can actually recruit the, the legendary Pokemon to your rescue team. And there were also items and so on that made rescuing or recruiting way easier. That was also the last of the 22.52 weight. And it was also really tedious because most of those dungeons were really, really deep. I think up until 70 might have also been like 100, so basically the highest it can be. And it was really, really difficult. But I was so proud, so proud of my save file when I did actually own every single... Pokemon that you could recruit in that game without cheats mind you without any cheats Ah, that was great. Loved that game really really did And I can't wait it, there is actually a remake, right? I can't remember if the remake of that one is the one released on um, On what should we call it on Nintendo 3ds or if the the re-release is on um, switch I hope it's on Switch, I hope I'm remembering things correctly. Cause, you know, playing through that game again, that's gonna be really, really fun. Fighting Olay, Tinker Tink, all right. Our second illustration rare. Mimikyu. Definitely wasn't expecting that. Okay, so my theory of these containing most of our bulk didn't hold true. It did contain a Tinker Tink. Pretty sure I've pulled this in my, whoops, in my original opening of Paldea Evolved as well. But there we go, Tinker Tink, right over there, and the last of the 22.53. I'm actually curious to see how this will turn out once I've put everything into the Excel sheet and see, and see if I can't find a connection or anything like that. 
So far it seems to be a bit random. Well, a bit random, I say. I think for the most part, for these weights it does hold true, but then all once again, people aren't really weighing Paldea Evolved out there. Because the set is still readily available, but it still is, if it is possible, then you should be aware of it, and you probably shouldn't buy any loose packs unless you actually trust the seller of those loose packs. So, there you go, that's my kind of, that's my word of advice for this one. Um, we are moving towards the more heavier packs in a few, in a few packs right here. So, let's see, Corviknight, Sprigatito, got a Shrewdel, and a Sableye. Gen 3 Pokemon, at least, up in this. Oh, speaking of Gen 3 Pokemon, did you see, did you see that newly released, oh, not newly released, um, newly announced Milotic Special Art Rare from Surging Sparks. That card looks absolutely amazing. And that kind of makes me, I have to open more Japanese sets, man. I have to open more Japanese sets because I still need so many special art rares. Like, I definitely need the Latias in, in my collection. And then I obviously need the freaking Milotic. That is a really cool card. And then, oh, I guess for Paradise Dracona, I guess the um, Lycia would also be kind of cool. Although, I'm not too, too um, set on it. If that makes sense. Like, I don't want the card for sure. The card that I really want from Paradise Dragon as I've said, is the Latias. The Latias Special Art Rare. That one looks really, really cool. Maybe I'll do open a few more boxes, but we we shall see. Lit Leo, Rockruff, Oranguru, Electrode, Vigoroth, got another Shrewdel, Hopip, and a holographic Cerulech. Really cool looking Cerulech. But then again, just a Cerulech, nonetheless. All right. Last of the 54, if we don't count the 55, which, you know, should have been in this weight ratio. And other than the Tinker Tink, though, seems to be holding true. I mean, if it does contain an illustration rare, I'll still mark that down as, you know, potentially no pull because it's just an illustration. Well, I say just an illustration rare. There are illustration rares in here that are really expensive. Pretty sure the Tyranitar is in here and the Magic Carp is in here. Don't know how expensive the Magic Carp and Tyranitar is. Last time I checked though, Tyranitar was still sitting above 30 euros and then the Magic Carp. Haven't checked on that in ages. I pulled it in Japanese and then I never looked back and just put these up here. There we go. And these are the so-called, well, let's open the 55, and this is when, what I would call the, the heavy packs. I've also had the wrong direction, the wrong direction, as I've just noticed, the 57 needs to be here. All right, 55, not holding my breath for this one, but maybe, maybe I'll be surprised. That is pack number one. Just once again, have to point that out, pack number one. Even though it is like the, what, 18th pack or something we open in this video. But it is pack number one in the Excel sheet. Here's the Tyranitar. Um, just teasing me at this point. Well, speaking of Tyranitar, I've actually bought the Tyranitar EX from... I've actually forgotten the set. Really cool. I've been buying a lot of EX cards, which is why I have a lot of mail right here sitting next to me. Just waiting for a few more letters, and then I'll open them in a mail day video. I'm really excited for that. Actually, I'm pretty sure like 90% of the cards I bought are actually graded. Because for these older picks, I've alluded to it in another video, especially for these older cards, you really can't rely on people giving them the correct um, condition. Because I've seen cards that people describe as like near mint or even just light plate. But if you look at the card, it's more than likely heavy plate, if not even damaged. So, especially for these older cards, people really overestimate the condition. Like they're, they're giving it a way better condition than it actually has. Because of course, that way they can they can expect a little bit more money or they can they can try to ask for a little bit more money than it is actually worth probably that's why and that's why i've i've grabbed most of these cards um graded but i will crack them out of the case and add them to my binder 
and Yin Shi Yu, sorry, Shi Yu EX. There we go, our first double rare. Our first EX double rare, there we go. There's the code card for that one. All right, 2257. Last one of these and then, well, I guess the 58 should be maybe 57 or 59. We'll see. Maybe this holds an EX card as well. I'm still really curious to see what that really, really heavy pack contains. I mean, we've pulled two full art trainers. I know the pull rates of Paldea Evolved are really good. Here's the Pikachu. Very nice. I know the pull rates of Paldea Evolved are supposed to be really good, so I do wonder if that's where a special illustration rare would be in the heaviest pack. Well, let's see. 22.58. Let me just move all of these across right here. Do not lose the tags because I do need those to be able to fill out my Excel sheet. Otherwise, it would be impossible. All right, let's see what we can find in here. A cute looking Meryl to start it out with. That's not too shabby. A Mankey. A Delibird. A Super Rod that I almost skipped. Swaylus. Spidops, Pyroar, Makuhita, and a Garnacle that I can't pronounce the name of. I think I just did. Well, anyways, there we go. Here's the code card for that one. So that one only had a holographic instead of an EX card. I mean, yes, these ones count as pulls, but for the most part, unless it's like a really special one, like the Iron Hands, for example, I think these are mostly just a little bit extra. I mean, it's better than just a holographic, but I think the cards you're really looking out for are like these full art trainers, full art Pokemon, and then illustrationers, and then of course, if you are lucky enough, these um, special illustrationers. I think I just named those already. Anywho's, we are getting towards the end of this opening. We are getting towards the end. Fletchling, Volt Orb, Fluga Flugagato. Mouse hold again, Tinker Tough, Slowpoke, a Glimmet, and a Dedene EX. Okay, that came from a 59 pack, right? Dedene EX. Let me put that right here. Show off the code card. There you go. There you go with the code card. And here is the Dedene. Very nice. Very, very nice. All right. We are entering towards the very heavy territory. And there's only one of each of these weights, which is kind of odd. Uh, we'll see what these contain. Okay, 22.61. What do you contain? Let me just put it right there so we can see the weight of that pack. We have a Tinker Tink again. A Pincherin. A Makuhita. Magikarp. Maybe we can pull the Magikarp illustration rare. Vespaquin. Ice Q. We have a Tunde Mouse. We have a Meowskarada special illustration rare. Okay. Okay. I'll take it. I'll take it. A Meowskarada. Very nice, out of the 22.61 set. That makes me wonder, what could possibly be in here then? If it's that heavy. Or maybe it's just, you know, negligible differences. But here we are, we did pull a special illustration rare, so that's very, very nice. There you go, recently bought this card in Japanese, but still, pulling a special illustration rare is always really, really nice. There you go. Meowskarada. Here is the 22.62 gram pack. Let's open this one up as well and see what we can pull in here. We started out with a Fuecoco, Bramblin, we've had a Qfant, very cute, Krogunk by Cavallo, Gotharita, Honchcrow singing in, it looks like he's like trying to sing or something. Calamitous Wasteland, Surviper, Gen 3 Pokemon up in this, Quaxly, and a Skeletor GX. Okay. Why was that so much heavier than the other ones, but just had an EX card? No one will know. Maybe it looks like my whole weight system has been thrown off because all of these pulls come in at a time 
or in a pack range, weight range, where I usually wouldn't expect those cards to come in. Alright, two more packs left. The 2.263 and the 22.65. Really curious to see what this one will contain. This one seems awfully heavy. But anyways, let's start off with this one. Um, I think we might still get a illustration rare. But we shall see. We shall see if we're lucky. Actually, let me put that right here so we can see the weight of the pack. And then... Let's see what we can find in here. Mast Chef. We've got a Wingle, very cute. Pineco, looking a bit shifty right there. Saguro. We have a Gothitelle. We have a Hydragon. And we have a Wuxian EX, okay. So maybe these very heavy packs isn't the ones you should be aiming for, it looks like. That's like kind of the idea I'm getting from them right now. We still have one pack left. Maybe the best pack saved for last? The heaviest of the whole booster box. So let's see what this one will contain. Let's see. Open it up. Put the pack right here. Show off the code card right away. There you go. There you go. And then also the energy, I suppose. Lightning energy. There we go. Okay. Will this have anything special? We'll shall, we shall see. Great Ball. Relor. Got a Bramble Ghast. Superior Energy Retrieval. Pseudo Voodoo. And is it... Yo, what the frick? It's a second special illustration rare? Are you serious? A second special illustration rare. Okay. A Tinker Tink. And a second special illustration rare. Okay, hear me out. This is what I've been saying. Like, this is why Paldea Evolved is considered like one of these sets that have really good pull rates. We pulled two special illustration rares from this opening. Are you serious? Yo, okay. Um, let me just show off all the pulls we've gotten from that booster box. Let me get a little bit closer for that. Okay, so we've pulled... Five normal EX cards right here, one of which being like a textured or a terrestrialized EX card with the Deidane right there. We've only pulled two illustration rares with the Mouse Hold and the Tinker Tink. So I think that Ting Lu might have taken the spot of what should have been or could have been an illustration rare. So the Meow Skurada and the Ting Lu. And then I've also pulled the Yono, which is unfortunately damaged out of the booster pack. No idea why. And the Dendra, which does look a bit odd in terms of texture, but maybe that's just how the card looks. Um, I think I have this one, so I will compare. And here we are with the conclusion of this little experiment. So I did differentiate these packs between light, medium and heavy. Light packs are all the packs that are lighter than 22.51 grams. Medium packs are all the packs that are 22.51 grams, all the way to 22.56 grams. And heavy packs are 22.7 grams and above. So in total, we ended up with 10 light packs. From those light packs, I ended up pulling one illustration rare and two full out trainer cards. The medium packs we definitely had the most of at 17 packs, but only one of those packs gave us a pull in form of an illustration rare. I ended up with 9 heavy packs and those packs definitely gave us the most pulls out of any other packs. With 7 out of 9 containing pulls, that is a 77.7% .7 chance of a pull. They range all the way from double rare EX cards to special illustration rares. For this opening actually 2 at the time. So my suspicion that these medium class packs contain most of our bulk ended up being correct. So to wrap this up, it turns out that Paldea Evolved can be weighed, at least from my small sample size. It appears that weighing out special illustration rares is really simple. So my advice for Paldea Evolved is, either buy a sealed booster box, or if you do want to buy loose packs, try to either go for sleeved booster packs, or buy your booster packs from a trusted seller. 
Well, but anyways, I guess that was a really successful opening. Um, once again, I will have the Excel sheet available in my Discord server. Link is down in the description below. And if you enjoyed this video, then please give it a thumbs up. If you didn't enjoy it, then give it a thumbs down. Tell me in the comments below what you didn't like so I can try to fix that for future videos. Other than that, right here is a video that YouTube thinks is best suited for you. Right here is the subscribe button, click this one first, then click this video. Check out any of the other videos in the description below. And I hope we'll see you in the next video. Thank you so much for watching. Peace, peace, take care.